I consider it my good fortune to be here today to perform the pleasant duty of starting the working life of the latest and largest of Tasmania's many hydroelectric stations. Opened in 1965, Poatina Power Station is located in Tasmania's northeast near Great Lake. It represents a massive engineering feat and community effort on a large scale. Original conception, design and construction was wholly a Tasmanian initiative, with the site's generation of hydroelectricity quickly becoming the foundation of the state's economic well-being. Situated near one of Australia's largest freshwater lakes, Tasmania's Great Lake is approximately 1,030 metres above sea level, with a surface area of 173 kilometres square. The Great Lake power development saw the construction of a tunnel approximately 5.6 kilometres long, which carried water from the lake through the Great Western Tiers to a single pipe known as a penstock. The water travelled down the mountain and then 150 metres below the surface to six hydroelectric turbines. The high pressure water spins a turbine which turns powerful magnets in coils of copper wire, generating renewable electricity for the vast region and reusable fresh water for farmers and irrigators downstream of the power station. The construction of the Great Lake Power Development was a massive engineering feat, combining the clever thinking and skills of a team of several hundred. Many migrants came to Tasmania to work on the hydroelectric schemes, including the Penstock at Poatina, which was constructed in Italy, then transported piece by piece by ship to Devonport in Tasmania. Poatina Power Station is the second biggest station in our portfolio, second only to Gordon, 300 megawatts, and it's, its strategic location, even in terms of the transmission grids, it's a really important station. And really its performance and its condition, it really wasn't where it needed to be. There was a lot of reliability issues with the station, and hence it needed a fair bit of investment. So three machines have had uh, turbine replacement, governor, control system, valve refurbishments, and the other, the other three machines have had some targeted work like electrical protection, again the controls on MIVs and the like that were some, some what we call key risks. After 45 years of operation, you know, they, they, reach, they reach an end of life. So modernised for us is means, yes, putting in some new equipment that's more reflective of the technology, but it's also about refurbishment and getting in and fixing a whole lot of components from bearings and shafts um, and making sure that they're in the right condition to give us the next 20, 30, 40 years of operation. Hydro Tasmania has a very large asset portfolio which includes 28 surface penstocks which carry water from the headworks or water storages right through to the power station. These 28 penstocks are high pressure pipelines which provide power to 14 of our major power stations. Poatina is probably our longest and certainly the highest pressure of these penstocks that we have and it's a critical asset in that delivery chain. It was constructed in 1964 and part of the design and the construction of the pipe is that higher up the hill where the pressures are a little bit lower, it has a smooth walled pipe. But lower down where the pressure becomes quite high, large diameter uh, high strength steel bands were incorporated in the design to provide the required strength. This is a, an extra challenge for us in providing the corrosion protection system for the pipe, such that we have to make sure that the steel and the, the bands themselves actually don't corrode. So external to the pipe we can do this by frequent inspections and maintenance as required, but inside the pipe it's a lot more difficult to assess the condition of the corrosion protection system. So a large part of this project is really about removing the original paint system which operated satisfactorily for 50 years and replacing that with a modern product that we believe will give us uh, another 50 years into the future. The process for painting is done in three steps. The first is the removal of the coal tar enamel, the existing coating placed on this penstock 46 years ago. To remove the coating, we use high pressure water blasting, blasted onto the penstock using 40,000 psi using fresh water from Great Lake. Water used for the high pressure water blasting of the penstock is all captured at the bottom. The water is then pumped to the wastewater treatment plant before the water is released downstream. Once the removal of the coal tar enamel is complete, the surface is then grit blasted and primed. 
This ensures a good bond between the existing steel and the new top coat to be placed over the penstock. The final top coat is a 500 micron thick epoxy, specifically chosen by Hydro Tasmania to be placed on this penstock in the winter months. The major objectives of this refurbishment project are firstly to reduce the risk of failure of the pipeline. So by that we mean we want to make sure that the pipeline doesn't burst and cause any damage. Secondly, it's to preserve the long-term value of the asset so that into the future it'll continue to provide power supply for the state. And thirdly, there is a marginal efficiency improvement to be gained by putting a new paint coating on the surface. So those three objectives are all brought together in undertaking this work. One of the key um, success factors is ensuring that the quality of the application of paint is correct. So a lot of work's going into mapping the surface to be painted, preparing the surface, and then inspecting the paint coating once it's applied so that we can be sure that it'll last its full design life into the future. One of the great things about these sort of opportunities is the people development. The people in terms of managing the job, supervising the jobs and the tradesmen on the tools that have that, that core hydro knowledge to maintain and refurbish these assets for decades to come. I've been with Hydro for about a year and a half now. Been in a couple of different areas in the business and uh, obviously now I've got the opportunity to do some site work um, with the outage here at the moment. It's a unique opportunity and there's heaps of exposure to um, a range of different assets, um, lots of people, and so I feel really fortunate to be a part of it um, and really enjoying the experience so far. Hydro Tasmania has chosen to do this project in winter. During the summer months, irrigators downstream require the water for their crops, where in the cooler months, there is no plantation downstream of Palatina. Our consultation showed that if we'd undertaken this work in summer, the losses downstream of the Palatina power station would be in the millions. So that would be losses to the mums and dads, the irrigators and the fish farm by not having water to irrigate or for the farming industries during the summer period. What doing it in winter has meant is that we are undertaking these works, one, whilst it's raining, and two, whilst their plantations are low. We know what's going on, we're happy. We, we can deal with it, which is what happens with the shutdown. We, uh, we, we were told about it, we dealt with it, we upgraded a pump we had down there, we pumped water from a quarry, we destocked our whole, whole farm at a cost to the company. We used other growers to grow fish for us through the period, and we carried less fish and carried smaller fish, all, all the result of the shutdown. But you guys got a job to do, we've got a job to do, and we work together and get the right outcome. The Rereg Pond was designed and built just after Bassling. So the reason for the Rereg Pond being there is to allow Hydro Tasmania to, to change its flows regularly. So every five minutes, the output of Palatina power station may change as a result of the national energy market. That, that means the flows out of the power station will also change every five minutes. What the Rereg Pond allows Hydro Tas to do is to control the, the flow of water downstream so what the downstream water user sees is a constant flow over 24 hours. The Rare Egg Pond is another example of Hydro Tasmania trying to do things differently to improve the prospects for the community. The Great Lake Power Development is a key part of Hydro Tasmania's generation portfolio, providing fantastic value to the state of Tasmania. This project is a perfect example of Hydro Taz doing things differently. What we've done is spend two years talking to the community and making the decision based on the bigger picture. So the picture outside of Hydro Taz, this is about Tasmania as a whole. Thinking about the big picture is something natural for Hydro Tasmania, from assets management to working with communities and generating electricity. 
Investment in Poatina Power Station will sustain the condition and performance of these important renewable energy assets for the Tasmanian community and beyond now and for years to come. And by looking for a different way to complete the Penstock project, we have been able to reduce the impact on the local community. Now that's the power of natural thinking.